Good morning. My name is Ken Adams. I am the captain for the Black Swamp Brigade. We are a bridge day repelling team. Today is October 14th, 2024. We're gonna make our eighth trip down there as a team. We've been around since uh, 2015. Some members of our team have been on for a lot longer. Uh, we or originated from Toledo Refining Company as a emergency response team, doing technical rescue, high angle, confined space and the like. Many of our team members originally uh, came from that team where we knew the industrial rescue side of things and we wanted to explore the recreational side. I wanted to share with you our experience this year. Um, like I say, it's Monday morning. Uh, I just got done doing inspection, um, pre-inspection for our gear and equipment. I'll just cut and edit and put some stuff in here. I'll show you the drive down. I really want to give the full experience of what it means and what it's like to be on bridge day as a repeller. From my, my end as a team captain, um, I've had to deal with a few more things other than just send money and go play. This all starts months and months in advance. Uh, you have to have your qualified individuals. You have to have known entities if you're going to form or create your own team if you're going to individually join a team you have to have skill and equipment as well so whether it's the individual training the individual experience if you're a recreational if you're a caver if you do industrial rescue one of the minimum standards is to ensure that you have a 250 foot rappel um, under your belt ahead of time bridge day is not a day for training bridge day is a tra is a day for doing so this isn't a time to learn how to do these long rappels um, our rope itself uh, we use the 716th PMI heat shield rope. Uh, it's 37 pounds just weighted on its own. So if you've ever been on short rappels and somebody's holding that rope below you, um, they're, they're kind of too tight on belay. That's what rappelling is like the entire time when you're on these long rappels. Um, so hopefully this, bo this video doesn't get boring. Hopefully it doesn't get, well, if it does, that may not be the hobby for you. If, if you do enjoy what I'm sharing with you, I appreciate the, uh, the attention. And um, like I say, this is what we're doing this year. This is the equipment we're using. These are the techniques that we're using. Um, by no way am I advocating, I'm not making any money off of product sales. Um, there are gonna be no links below in the description. Um, you know, you can like and subscribe if you like, but I just use this account for fun things like this. Just to give you a quick and little bit of a backstory, um, we're gonna be repelling in six days on Saturday. It doesn't mean that we registered yesterday. Uh, this is a process that takes months. Uh, you have to, as a captain, set your team up, um, get your team registered early on, and then um, have the individuals register after that that are in your team. And once everybody is organized that way, whether you have repellers or you have bottom pass, um, bottom pass people will be down just doing belay, where repellers are going to be repelling and doing belay, depending on how your team organizes it. That all has to take place well in advance. Get your t-shirts ordered, get whatever else you want to do as a team, get your campsites organized, um, make sure you know where everyone's going to be at, uh, when to meet, and we'll have to be all together on Friday for our safety orientation. Individual sign in, check IDs, make sure we're all safe and oriented, then do the safety meeting itself, then go back and do our gear check, and then we can get on ropes. Maybe uh, maybe that interests somebody out there to know what start to finish looks like. All right, that's what I got for now. So we're on a pretty extreme wide view. I got the camera up close. I'm gonna start bringing all the equipment up and staging it out in front. Here, 900 foot of PMI heat shield rope. Inside the bag that we had it stored in is our edge protection. And then that's our rope. Uh, we keep track to make sure that we're not milking it. In, two, in 2023, our double bottom, this was on the bottom of the rope. So when we go out to do our bridge repelling, I don't want to send this back down and let it be the bottom. So I need to take the rope out and restuff the bag. Um, so I'll just run it through a pulley overhead. This gives me a good opportunity to inspect the rope as well. This is something that I'm going to do hand over hand, right down to the ground. Now knowing that I have to restuff the bag with the double knot on top, I'm going to move that out to the side here and I'll start going through 900 foot of rope. Definitely something you want to do with gloves on because they're actually feeling the rope. I'm putting my hand through it. I'm inspecting two to three foot at a time for 900 foot of rope.
right, there we go. We're at the end of the rope. This will be the bottom after we're done this year. Uh, the last thing that's inside of our bag is one more large piece of edge protection. Um, we had access to some Kevlar matting that's um, this is actually fire hose you know, sections from a 12 inch fire hose at one of our industrial sites. So I use that to line the bag to protect the rope uh, from any outside. And then we'll move our way back over. Let's get this packed up. So when we flip this rope, it actually gives us a second chance to handle everything. Um, on the inspection, you can see where with our heat shield rope, this is PMI heat shield rope, uh, which is a Kevlar exterior. This um, black tracing on the outside is where somebody was using an aluminum bar or a rack. Um, we use stainless steel mostly, but whenever someone does, it's there. I uh, found a few spots where the kinks are bendy and um, just taking ply it around a little bit and get everything back in order. So we got our military spec duffel bag. This is actually an issued one that one of our team members went in. Oh, and we've got all of our stats. I'll throw a picture on later. Um, and then my big piece of material there to give it structure. This is actually how we pack our bag on top. Uh, so like when we get to de-rigging, you'll see. And then it's just hand over hand. And because we have an upside down pile, you just keep it. Fixing all of that. All right, we'll let the magic of time lapse take care of this. All right, end of the rope, double bottom, nothing on top. So now this is on top. This will be our bottom. Do one single overhand knot just to avoid confusion later on. All right, any veterans in the room, you just felt my pain. All right, that's about 37 pounds, 900 foot, 7 16 PMI heat shield rope in a mill spec, mill spec bag. All right, let's get the rest of our gear. All right, we use a short haul for mechanical advantage with a rope grab and a swivel on top. The Petzl Rescue Center is the one that we've gone with over, over all of our years. This is actually a fairly Nice, it is uh, not fairly, this is good. It's smooth grip on the grabber. We unfortunately used a different one in the years past and it did have a negative effect on our rope. The swivel on top where we anchor this allows for the four to one mechanical advantage to reorient. Um, and this is what we use to grab the rope and give us some slack so that the next repeller can get set up while the other one's on the descent. And it's just, I just carry a 75 foot rope. A really high visibility PMI rope bag. I've seen a lot of people just use any kinds of bags. A couple of uh, gallon jugs of water creates enough weight to lower it down and have visibility so that uh, the teams on the ground, your belayers, know what's coming and what to grab. Um, some people will use, inside their water jugs, they'll put uh, glow sticks. So if it's red, green, two reds, two green, there's a lot of variety. What'll happen is as those ropes are going down, people aren't sure what rope they're looking for. Uh, over the years, no one else has used a giant orange bag, so this has been ours. Got another grounded piece of uh, Edge Pro. I use a Petzl Pro Traction device in one of my personal setups. Uh, when it's time to break down at the end of the day, we pull our rope to the top, and this has got a progress capture that's immediate. There's no release, so we're gonna, you'll see this later on how we set it up, but make sure that that's in our gear bag. 
Another element that I take with us is another rope grab, the uh, still petzl, this is a micro sender. This has worked out fantastic at the bottom. So we have dedicated bottom belayers. We'll wear a seat harness, we'll clip this in, and then on belay, our rope coming down goes through the rope grab, and you can take up slack and you can release it immediately. If there's an emergency and they need to belay, they just sit down, run downhill, whatever they need to do, but it's already holding onto the rope and doesn't let go. So since we have adults, um, not that we always act like adults, but I make sure that there's a harness at the bottom, carabiner, and as if, if one of our team members is belaying on a rotation, then we'll just move that rope grab over to that person. But if it's a dedicated bottom belayer, a really nice lightweight um, rock climbing harness works out well. All right, everyone on the team already knows they have eyes and ears, but our bottom belayer, or if we have a malfunction as the captain, I'll make sure I have at least one extra helmet, extra eyes for PPE. If you're on the bottom, you have to have your helmet on, have your glasses on at all times. Um, there's 100,000 people above you at any given time a slushy could crater in and just avoid that. Leave your helmet on. All right, gear bag, personal gear bag. Everybody on our team should be checking our gear individually before like, at all times. So hard hat, gloves, present. If you have a good rescue gear bag or some type of gear bag, this works out really well for all your daily stuff. Make sure throughout, you're at six hours that the bridge is open. You're gonna be a half hour, 45 minutes early. Um, you're gonna be on top, bottom. You're gonna be an extra hour after the bridge closes, finishing setting up and breaking down. So make sure that you have your trail mix, your water, um, your meals for the day. Um, that's how most of the people on our team do it. Uh, if we don't, um, you'll need to get off the bus a little bit early and go through the crowd and find yourself uh, whatever it is you like to eat. So top down inspection, make sure that your harness is parallel perpendicular. I still keep my hardware on the right side, carabiners on the left side. Make sure that you have your personal Prusik, your small and large Prusik, whatever system you use for self-rescue. Um, I do keep a black webbing that's nine foot. Um, this works out well for a seat harness. Um, I still keep that emergency side in mind if I need to, who knows what. Um, so make sure you're locking screw link, screw link, whether it's Black, black Swamp Brigade or any other teams, um, strong advocation for having a screw link, um, whether it's a tri-link, a D-ring, an O, whatever, don't put a locking a, or uh, some type of carabiner in there. Use actual hardware. Um, take a quick peek at your rack itself. We've got a couple of protective sleeves on some of the guys on the team. Make sure my nut's tight. One, two, three, four, five bars, plus the hyper bar. Ready to rock and roll. Helmet, gloves, non-locker. I have everything. We all use our full body harnesses. I think we only have one person on our team that uses a seat harness for repelling. Um, it's your skill set, your ability, and your desire. That's what I have to say about that. Extra gloves, extra glasses. Bridge Day has an awesome safety team 100 percent they will be in attendance at every single anchor point for every single team for every single rappel um, they advocate that you have somebody from your team watching somebody else going off you're not going to just go out rig in and rappel down you have to check your partner send them off tie off system so we use a 20 foot body cord these are for body positioning outside of the handrail so We'll just take a girth hitch around the handrail itself. We put this clear out of the way, overhand knot as a stopper at the end. And now I've got two lines. I'll take a Prusik, squeeze that third wrap in there, dress it out nice and neat. All right, so go back to the gear locker, get yourself a carabiner. And now this is gonna stay on top of the bridge all day. 
what happens is that I, I stand on the inside of the handrail, if this is my handrail, and it's attached. I clip this into myself, and now I can make adjustment. I can move myself closer, farther away. Shouldn't be a training lesson if you're learning. If you're about to go out to bridge day, you should already know this kind of stuff. But I clip in, and that is my safety line. It stays on me 100% of the time. I go over the handrail, and I stay connected at all times. Once I'm in my system, we proof in it, proved it, we've done our micro repel, we're good to go. That's when I come off of my safety line, set that off to the side, and the next repeller can use that to get in. And now I'm on rope to go down. So always put two as, the, uh, as you're preparing for up top so that these can be available for everybody and you're not using anyone's personal gear throughout the day. So, safety first, edge protection, personal gear inspection, those are done and out of the way. Bottom belay, eyes and ears, harness, micro sender, carabiner. That's going down to the bottom, we'll separate that gear the night before. Edge protection up top, um, at the end of the day we need to have our, our progress capture pulley so that when we pull the rope up we can stuff it, that's the one that we use. at least two or three pieces of edge protection. We already saw two are in the bag. Um, rope's already been inspected, flipped, oriented. We're good to go over there. Um, extra piece, uh, you wanna have that for the handrail. If there's a section of handrail that may or may not, um, depending on the wind direction, what's going on, just have something available and ready for it. So I may have mentioned with the uh, gear bag for your personal effects, um, whoever's going up to rig is going to have all of their equipment in this bag except for our harness is already on. So you'll have some free space, but wherever you're setting yourself up for the day, you're going to want also to include rain protection, um, clothing. It starts off cold, gets warmer usually. Sometimes it starts off dry and gets wetter. So depending on what the forecast has in mind, Give yourself enough room to go in and out. So, personal gear bag, rigging gear equipment, rope inspection, good to go. Okay, we're gonna make this a two part video. This is the end of part one. Uh, I'm gonna try and get this edited and put on the air before we actually go to Bridge Day starting tomorrow. Uh, look forward to part two and we'll see you later. That's tough. I don't really wanna watch that video. <laughs>